Good evening and welcome to a local debate special here on MKTV. My name is Jamie Chalmers and I'll be hosting this debate this evening with a number of local representatives of the political parties that will be standing for election in the forthcoming May elections. If I may introduce our panel this evening. Um, from left to right, not politically, I might add, it's uh, representing the Green Party, Alan Francis. Mm -hmm. And next to him is Mike Phillips from the UK Independence Party. Good evening. And then Chris Williams, who is the Cabinet Member for Highways, Transport, Parking and Planning. Good evening, Jeremy. Good Liberal evening. Democrats. Um, next to us, we have an independent candidate, Jeanette Green. Good evening. Thanks, evening. And then Councillor Andy Dransfield, representing the Conservatives. Good evening. And finally, last but not least, uh, candidate Brian White representing the Labour Party. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks to everybody for coming this evening. Um, I'd like to just open the debate by really asking about the, the growth agenda within Milton Keynes. It's clearly high on the horizon. There are a number of parties involved and bodies involved in taking it forward. Um, if I can turn to you first, Chris, just to um, yes. let us know how you see the growth taking place and taking shape. And, and there. Uh, I, the Liberal Democrats' position is very clear. We are in favour of sustainable growth. We're not in favour of headlong growth. We want growth that is linked to improvements and the necessary infrastructure. We want growth that is controlled by Milton Keynes residents and Milton Keynes bodies rather than a remote Labour government. And we believe that growth is essential and necessary for the well-being and the future of, our, uh, of Milton Keynes. I understand. Excellent. Um, Brian, seeing as how you mentioned Labour there, uh, what, what are your views on the subject? I mean, one of the reasons that I'm coming back is that none of the bodies that are actually responsible for growth at the moment, whether that be English partnerships or the council, seem to be listening to the people of Milton Keynes. There's a whole big debate about how the growth happens, not whether it happens or not. That debate is over. The qu debate now is about how it happens. And nobody seems to be listening to the people of Milton Keynes about what they want. And the bodies that are the existing councillor, the existing people in English partnerships, just do not appear to be listening to the people of Milton Keynes. And I want to make sure that this election is about those people being held to account to make sure they do listen, whether it's the Liberal Democrat Council who are not listening, whether it's English partnerships who are not listening, or whether it's any of the other political parties. So I think there's a real big debate about making sure that the communication between the people of Milton Keynes and the bodies that are actually implementing the growth happens so that the issues around quality, issues around zero carbon houses, issues around public transport, issues around the design of homes so as you've got homes that are built that allow businesses to be run from home so you don't have commuting. A whole range of issues I think the whole debate about growth should be about. But the primary one is that the bodies that are currently there, the Live Down Council and the English Partnerships, are just not listening to the people of Milton Keynes at the moment. And um, Councillor Dransford, obviously you're involved. I think the sad thing is, uh, having Brian said that, is the one body that isn't listening to the people of Milton Keynes, and probably to the people of the South East, is the Labour government, of which Brian was, until not lo too long ago, a, a member. Um, the, the Labour government is not listening. Imposing growth that isn't wanted. The Conservative position is we want organic growth in Milton Keynes, so we want to grow it. In, in line with the needs of the people and the businesses of Milton Keynes. Let the people and businesses of Milton Keynes decide how much growth. So the debate certainly isn't over about whether there should be massive growth. It's about the That's degree right. of growth. There's also an issue about what type of growth. Um, we, the English partnerships or the partnership committee are getting rid of our famous and very effective grid roads. They're tarmacking over them. They are grabbing money in the centre of Milton Keynes, tarmacking it over and building on our boulevards. And I'm afraid we've got a Lib Dem council who's just bending over backwards to help English partnerships and the government deliver what they want. Only the Conservative Party in Milton Keynes and nationally will stop this headlong growth and dash for growth that we don't want. OK, just to pause for a second in between the, the parties there, Jeanette as an independent person. Um, what, what do you think the key issues about the growth of Milton Keynes are? Um, again, uh, funny enough, I agree with Brian. Um, it, is, it is all about growth, but it has to be sustainable within the local communities. And we have to listen to our people that, you know, we've built Milton Keynes over a 40-year period. Um, they're not listening to the people. They're, they're expecting them to, to accept these horrendous buildings that are going up in their areas. And I think we should start listening now and we should be building a community which is sustainable with everybody who can have a nice, enjoyable life. Don't take away our open spaces, which is what people are doing. And we have to encourage 
uh, far more things um, for the communities to be able to get their teeth into and be part of this community. Don't exclude them because it's not going to happen. We are here to represent the people and it's the people that matter. Okay, I'm, I'm also hearing the words um, organic, environment, green used a lot. Um, Alan, your views? Well, the Green Party has been opposed to this uh, imposition of growth uh, on, on Milton Keynes for a long time. Last year I represented the Green Party at the examination in public into the South East Plan, which was looking at the uh, growth agenda throughout the whole of the South East. We're talking about 68,000 houses, almost a doubling in size of Milton Keynes, and that's going to be the massive loss of the green fields which, around Milton Keynes, which we think are a valuable resource for people, not just for growing food, but for recreation and leisure. It's going to put a massive extra load on things like the grid roads, for example. You're going to get much longer queues on grid roads, but more traffic, um, so on. What we have said is that rather than this being imposed by central government, which is the way it's being done at the moment, we should have a referendum of the people of Milton Keynes to say, do you want growth just to accommodate your own natural growth, which is what we would support, or do you want massive growth to accommodate the whole of the South East's growth? which is what the Labour government is uh, trying to impose on us at the moment. So the decision should be with the people of Milton Keynes, not with central government. Right, so then um, just obviously to round off the set, I mean, Mike, if you, if you share your views with us, and then I think what we can do is actually just get into the heart of the matter a little bit more. Yes, certainly. Now, you've heard a lot of fine words from these other uh, candidates sitting around the table here. Uh, the fact of the matter is that... Expansion of Milton Keynes is going to happen whether anyone likes it or not. And there's a reason why it's going to happen. And that reason is immigration. Now, the projected population growth in this country is from 60 million now to 67 million in 2020. That's only in 13 years' time. 7 million immigrants. They have to live somewhere. And John Prescott, now the department taken over by Miliband and the Labour government are determined that they're going to be shoehorned in here, there and everywhere. Milton Keynes is a new town and that's going to, that means that we are going to have to take the brunt of it. Right. Um, nonsense. Yeah, sorry, go on, Brian. You're shaking he your says head, nonsense, yeah. but you can't, do, you can't defy the mathematics. An increase of 7 million people and it's not due to the British people breeding. It is entirely due to immigration. I think, I mean, how, how would you tackle that issue then? It's a national issue, isn't it? Right. The, this immigration problem is foisted on us uh, by Brussels. Of course it is. <clears throat> when, when this country uh, went, into Brussels, went into the European Union, we gave away all sorts of powers, and one of them is control over immigration. Now, whether we like it or not, that's the legal position. Uh, we should have a national government that is battling against this. Mm. You all know, you've seen it yourselves out in the streets, Polish cars, Lithuanian cars, cars from all over Eastern Europe, they come here, I'm sure they're very fine people, but the fact of the matter is, there's barely room for us, never mind for these people as so, well. So Another 7 million, that's the size of Greater London. But just to follow on from that then, um, acknowledging the driving force behind the growth of Milton Keynes, um, what, what are the key issues for you about the growth specifically um, you know, in relation to the local area? Since it has to happen, then of course I'm all for the infrastructure before the expansion. But you can whistle for that from a Labour government, of course. Shoehorn is the word I think you should be taking on board. I mean, it seems clear from, from what a lot of you have said that there, there is a need for people to be listening to the people of Milton Keynes about Absolutely. the great issues and those they, sorts of things. They don't care what the people of Milton Keynes say. It's going to happen. Brian, go on. I mean, to say that there's no money coming from the Labour government is absolutely wrong. There's a lot of money that's gone into English partnerships. There's a lot of money come from English partnerships through to the council. And uh, there's been a lot of investment. Uh, English partnerships only last week was talking about investment in the hospital. So there's a massive amount of investment. Uh, I think the debate has to be how that investment is used, not whether there's the investment, because there is the investment coming in. It's a question of how that investment, the quality, the uh, relevance of uh, the business-led agenda, when English partnerships did their um, submission to the study that um, Alan was talking about, South East Plan, there were only eight pages devoted to businesses. Why was that? So it's about how it's actually going to happen, about the kind of emphasis about 
um, the vision for Milton Keynes about taking us forward as a city. That's what the debate here should be about. Um, Mike's absolutely right in one respect. Market forces is making Milton Keynes a target for investment. That's because there's only two or three key areas in the whole of the South East that are capable of actually sustaining uh, massive development. Milton Keynes patterns to be one of those, whether we like it or not. And therefore the question to say is, how do we actually take it forward? What are the issues around quality? What are the issues around environmental concerns that we ought to be taking forward? I mean, let's just linger on that for a second and just talk about I mean, Milton Keynes as um, a business city, as it were. I mean, the business economy is quite clearly important. It's, for the, and it's the, very important, but I think Brian is doing typical labour spin. Yes, money is coming in from English partnerships and from the government into Milton Keynes, but far, far, far more is going out have you noticed recently all the high-rise, the new juries in hotel, all the high-rise development, the building over the grid roads? Where do you think the revenue from that, those land sales is going? Not going to Milton Keynes, going back to the Treasury. This is a grab by Gordon Brown, aided and abetted by Brian's mates in London and in Milton Keynes, taking money out of Milton Keynes. And the majority of the business rate that is generated in Milton Keynes is going elsewhere. National back up, back up to <laughs> all, all, you know, all labour areas in the North East. They're getting a fortune spent in the North East, coming out of places like Milton Keynes. We are the poor losers in Milton Keynes. Alan, Alan. The, the problem is that it is this pressure from business who are saying <clears> that they want to locate in London and the South East but the government is giving in to them. The government should not be giving in to them. There are lots of areas in the country, the North, the Midlands, <coughs> where there's high unemployment, there's empty housing and empty factories. And what the government ought to be doing is diverting investment to those areas where there's, say, people need jobs and there are already existing houses, rather than um, saying, we'll build over the green fields of the South East We've already got an overheated economy, massive traffic jams everywhere. So what they really ought to be doing is diverting that investment so that businesses who uh, can then employ people where there are houses and land ready for businesses available, um, where the economy is not overheated, rather than cramming everything in the south east. But, but Alan, that's what the what regional development do. agencies are doing. That's what they were set up to do. That's what they're doing. That's why unemployment has fallen in this country, because we have created the jobs in the North East. I remember in Milton Keynes when it was 12.5% unemployment here not that long ago. But there is, uh, the RDAs are actually creating those jobs. That's the whole reason they were set up in the first place. But are, these, are these the unelected bodies, Brian? Are these the unelected regional bodies you're talking about? The regional development agencies are actually appointed by government to oh. deliver. And they've delivered... Uh, in particularly if you look at Scotland and Wales when they were set up 20, 30 years ago they then convert it into the Scottish Parliament and the Welsh Assembly I personally would like to see elected regional government, the people in the North East rejected it but that's what I personally would like to Chris, see Chris, um, just briefly before they rejected we um, the finish regional this assemblies, not whether they were elected or not the, uh, no, they, they rejected the concept. concept Milton Keynes Council obviously has been um, overseen by the Lib Dems for quite a while now I mean is there anything you'd just like to add to the debate uh, yes, I, I want to talk about the, the, the obvious subject that's come up, which is the business community. Um, I, I am in favour of the business community um, looking for growth in Milton Keynes to the extent that the business community provides jobs, securities and future for our current residents and our new residents. Um, I'm, so I want to encourage business in Milton Keynes to continue to invest in Milton Keynes, but I want to do that in order to secure the future of the children who already live here yep. and the benefit to those who are coming to live here. Business is one voice amongst many. There is also the voice of the, the voluntary section, there's also the voice of the professionals, teachers, doctors and others. All of those voices need to be heard in the debate about the growth of Milton Keynes. To this extent, I agree with Brian's analysis that growth is coming and although there may be those who say we don't want it, the reality is, as many have said, it will be imposed upon us if Milton Keynes itself does not control it. Therefore, I encourage the business community to invest, I encourage the voluntary section 
to voice their concerns and to voice their views. And I want to see sustainable growth in Milton Keynes that meets the needs of those who live here and those who are to come. But Chris, the council's policy, for example, uh, in encouraging um, design of, of houses doesn't accommodate people working at home, doesn't have things like broadband as a requirement. So there are a whole range of issues that we ought to be uh, putting in place as a council, and that's what I've argued about when I say the council not listening to people. There's a whole range of these issues that we ought to be having a debate about what is the best way forward. And Chris, Chris, you are a member of that Sorry, cabinet, Chris, there, and you do not listen. There are a range of issues here that are um, relevant, and I think what we'll do is after the break we'll come back and we'll explore these a bit more. But I so think what we have to also minute. concentrate very, very much on is the people at the moment. Sorry, we're on. Try Aquafresh Extreme Clean. Its microactive foam seeks out sources of bad breath, even in the pores of your tongue, leaving you so refreshingly clean, you can't help feeling a change. Aquafresh Extreme Clean. Take the feeling of clean to the extreme. flows through every surface of a Hyundai. The only car company to offer a manufacturer-backed five-year warranty with unlimited mileage across the entire range. Hyundai. Drive your way. Advertise your business on MKTV. Why? MKTV reaches three quarters of the homes in the UK and this is your chance to engage with Britain's fastest growing city. Advertise this month and get one month free. Milton Keynes is the success story of the new millennium, and MKTV is there, broadcasting to the nation. Liberate your business with MKTV. Where would you find a host of beautiful tableware and tastefully coordinated accessories? A stunning range of stylish furniture for the conservatory and garden that's beyond comparison. And of course, a unique selection of plants, including exclusive and new varieties, like this gorgeous pot-grown patio clematis. Frosts, naturally. Welcome back to our election debate this evening on MKTV. Um, I'm joined by a number of representatives here from the local parties. We're debating the issues that are relevant to the town at the moment. Um, I wanted to just take a moment. I'll just um, mention again who we are, uh, the members are here, if I may, for a second, just in case we've forgotten. Um, Alan Francis from the Green Party. Mike Phillips representing the UK Independence Party. Um, Chris UK Williams. Um, Chris Williams from the Liberal Democrats. Good evening. Uh, Jeanette Green, uh, independent candidate. Andy Dransfield from the Conservatives, and Brian White from Labour. Thank you very much for coming. Um, to go back to what we were talking about a minute ago, there's been lots of discussion about the growth of Milton Keynes, the way it should um, be shaped and the way it should go forward. Who should have the responsibility for driving that vision forward? Where does that responsibility lie? We have a number of bodies, <coughs> um, English partnerships, uh, Milton Keynes partnership and the council, for instance, who are um, responsible for driving forward part of the growth. Um, where should the buck stop, as it were? Um, Chris, if I turn to you for a second. Uh, I, there's no getting out of the answer to that. The buck should stop with Milton Keynes Council as the true representative of the people of Milton Keynes. Um, and that includes an ad ad admission of all that is good and, uh, and a comprehension of all that is not so good. Um, I utterly accept that the buck stops with Milton Keynes Council uh, and its elected representatives. Okay, I mean, how does that then tie in with, with the concept that we have organisations like the Partnership Committee who do seem to be pushing an agenda? Yes, they are pushing an agenda, and in some quarters mm. in the Council, I can tell you, it is resisted, firmly resisted, to the extent that we have already stopped MKP um, changing the V10 into 
into a city street, for instance, there are large numbers of examples where the people of Milton Keynes have resisted the pressure of bureaucracy to make Milton Keynes in its own image rather than ours. Chris, I thought the V10 proposal actually came from the council officers. Certainly when I was MP, that's where it was coming from. So you've defeated your own officers. And council, that's very good. And council officers run by a Liberal Democrat, Democrat administration. And while they might now be saying they're trying to defend the V10, where were they on the western expansion area where there aren't going to be any grid roads? Where there aren't going to be any underpasses or bridges across Watling Street? So, so people, parents, children are going to be at risk crossing a major road and no grid roads to support them. So that has come from the lack of support from a Lib Dem administration in Milton Keynes. It's Lib Dems together with the Labour government that are going to ruin Milton Keynes if we're not careful. But um, your views, I mean, I, I certainly think that uh, <coughs> the, the Milton Keynes partnership is basically a part of central government. It's got representatives from the council on it and the community, but it is basically part of English partnerships, which is a government organisation. And if, it's going to, if, if we're going to have to have this expansion, then it should certainly be controlled by the people of Milton Keynes. Absolutely. One example, for example, was the idea about building more houses in some of the existing estates along the V7 corridor. Now, what we've said is that that might well be uh, a good idea as long as it's acceptable to the people living in those estates. They must not have it imposed yeah, upon yeah. them. Mm -hmm. They must be consulted right. and Absolutely. their views taken yes. into account. Yeah. Jeanette, Jeanette, sorry, you were say. Yes, I, and I think what we have forgotten, you know, we're talking about all this expansion and English partnerships and they're, and they're trying to enforce us to have all, all this development coming so-called from London. I don't believe this, to be quite honest with you. I think what we've got to do now is we've got to clear up our own backsides here, to be quite honest with you, because we have got lack of, of health facilities. We desperately need extra things for the hospital. We have got a very inadequate hospital for Milton Keynes. We won't be able to accept all of those things that are coming in because if we don't expand that, our schools are desperate. I've got a school situation um, of where they were desperate for a new boiler for the school. I mean, why should a head teacher be so desperate on, on, what, uh, on how he's going to actually heat the school for his children when this should be supplied automatically? And, and, and these are things that are going on that people aren't understanding and they're expecting more and more and more growth. We need houses for, for young people to be able to buy at the moment. They can't afford these things. We've got to come up with a special scheme to put these people on the housing market. There is so much we need to do infrastructurally to, to, to now settle down Milton Keynes before we ever consider expansion, expansion, expansion. We have got to clean up our own backyard. Um, Mike, your, your thoughts? This is all a sham, Jamie. All of these people here are pretending that somehow they as candidates or councillors or even the people of Milton Keynes have any control over this. They don't. I'm they sorry, no uh, people. I'm all. sorry. I I'm think sure no, you no. Like it to be but Jeanette. they should. It's, it's got to be. You have to face no, no. Fact. It's got to be. I'm it's sorry. No. By, lo by central government. Now, somebody said EP is a government body. Of course, it's a government body, and uh, they will. Th they will thrust the government's agenda at this this time. Please do not like underestimate people and, from Milton Keynes. I'm sorry. Somehow, no. some of you have bought the idea that the V10. No. Uh, 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 aberration has gone away. There are local elections coming up. They've wound their necks in until that is over. You wait until the local elections are over and then it'll be back to business as usual. Give people more credit in Milton Keynes. They yeah. are... They people are, in Milton no, Keynes I'm sorry. do not have the power. People what will... Have, when people stand... I'm sorry. When people stand up outside the Milton Keynes uh, council offices and they are coming in force, believe you me, they will be heard. Absolutely. And it's about time people realise that from the political parties because it is about the people. We've forgotten what the hell we're doing here and it's about time we actually sat down now and really sorted out something that we need constructually. People, Milton Keynes has been a fantastic 
uh, building over the last 40 years. We have now got to put some heart into the building. We've got to think about the people. We've got to think about our educational needs, our health needs, and certainly about doing something for our young people. We've got no proper youth club or, or situations to keep our youngsters off the street. And I think it's appalling that we think that people don't matter. They do matter. And I hope they all stand up I'm to, to be counted. Of course it's appalling, but it's just not going to happen. But it, it will, Mark, it will happen. The people of Milton happen. Keynes do matter. And they're going to have their say. I would like them they're to going matter. to have their say, like Mike, the next case, Thursday. Andy. And quite frankly, if this clear message is sent back to Westminster through the voting in Milton Keynes that the Labour government have got it wrong in Milton Keynes, and the Liberal Democrats are going along with them in that that plan, the only way next week is for people in Milton Keynes to be voting for those representatives who will make a difference and send a clear message back to Whitehall. I'm sorry, Mike. You might, have, you, you might think that by protesting, but quite frankly, you are not going to make a damn bit of difference in Milton Keynes next you, you week, but the know, main parties will. You I must know that... Brian, 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 please. please. <laughs> people ought to look at what's been uh, Labour government's done for the people in Milton Keynes. I remember campaigning for <laughs> improvements in schools when I was on Buckinghamshire Education <laughs> Committee. Uh, um, Andrew was on. And we're not getting the money then. Investment in schools over the last 10 years has gone up massively. Investment in the hospitals has gone up massively. That's a national issue, but it is actually about providing local services. And I think people should be aware that the Conservative Party, if they were running Milton Keynes Council, look at the history of what they did with last time they were running it. And with 12.5% unemployment, with massive cuts, with all the problems that that happened, the same with Buckinghamshire County Council, where we used to have cuts year on year, there's been a massive improvement in uh, the services provided uh, locally, and I think people should recognise that but also look to the future and say, how are we going to move this city forward? Chris. Uh, looking to the future and how we move the city forward, uh, Brian's final words there, and something that I wholeheartedly concur with. Uh, Jeanette has said this is a matter for the people of Milton Keynes in defiance of Mike's rather pessimistic, almost doom-laden view. Um, and I, I accept that the people matter, but what I accept most of all from what Brian has said is the need now to move the debate to the quality of life that needs to be here when growth occurs. It's no longer a question of if there will be some form of growth, whether it's organic, as Andrew has said, or whether it's the dominating force of the Labour government, as most of us here fear there will be form of growth. Now, I believe, as Brian does, that the agenda now needs to be about the quality of life. It needs to be about uh, the quality of the homes we build. It needs to be about um, simple things like energy okay. saving and carbon emissions. I think, I mean, that, what we'll do kind of is it's clear that the um, Milton Keynes growth agenda, as you say, is happening to us. What we'll do is we'll come back after the break and we'll debate how that growth should take shape.